object initially at rest, therefore having momentum initially of zero, can gain momentum by expelling an object behind itself. In this video here, the cannon fires a ball and while the ball goes whizzing off in this direction with momentum m ball v ball, the cannon having much more mass experiences the same momentum, but because it has more mass, v of the cannon is much smaller than v of the ball. And this application of the conservation of momentum is what we call an explosion. For example, here I have two masses, one has a mass three times that of the other. Now, momentum is conserved, so we know that initial momentum is zero. If we write our conservation of momentum equation here, we can see that when they separate as a result of an explosion, the one with the greater mass has a much smaller velocity, and from our balanced momentum equation here, we can tell that V2 must be three times V1 since the masses cancel. We can see here where we have two trolleys of the same mass, again, initial momentum is zero, final momentum has also got to be zero, and so when the explosion occurs, the explosion exerts the same force on each object. That means that each object experiences the same change in momentum, so they both move away with the same magnitude of velocity. If, however, one of our objects has twice the mass, then again the explosion creates the same force, but in this direction we will have mv1, and in this direction we will have mv2. And because m on this side is greater than m on this side, its velocity must be lower to give an overall of zero. Remembering, of course, in this direction, technically it's negative. So when they separate, v1 is twice v2. If the person sat on the trolley here throws one of these small bags out behind them, then that small bag will travel with a momentum of minus m bag v bag. The trolley must experience an equal and opposite momentum in order for the total momentum to equal zero as it was before. So in this direction we'll have m trolley v trolley. And because the mass of the bag is so much smaller than the mass of the trolley, its velocity will be greater. So the trolley will experience a small delta mv. But if you continue to do this, then the trolley will continue to experience multiple changes in momentum, each one increasing its overall velocity. As a result, it will speed up with each successive ejection of material. And this is the principle upon which rockets work. A chemical engine burning will produce a large amount of products from that combustion reaction. And all those small products will be thrown out of the back. And because of conservation of momentum, each one of those produces an equal and opposite change in momentum on the rocket. And all of those add up to produce a steadily increasing velocity. So let's have a look at an example question. Here we're told that a shell of mass 2 kilograms is fired at a speed of 140 meters per second. That's what we've got going on here. By an artillery gun with a mass of 800 kilograms. So that's what we've got going on on this side. We're trying to work out what the velocity of the gun is. Well, we know that the total momentum before the shell was fired is zero. Since since mv in this direction has to equal mv in that direction, or at least the magnitudes do, because it's going to be travelling in a negative direction on that side, we can say that 800 times the velocity of the gun 
is going to be equal to 140 times 2, or the momentum of the shell. By rearranging the equation to get it in terms of velocity and plugging our numbers in, we get a final velocity of 0.35 metres per second. And let's have a look at a final question on this. We're told that we have an experiment here where initially two trolleys are at rest, so momentum is zero. These two trolleys have the same mass, but an extra mass of x has been added to trolley A. There's a spring between them that when a trigger is fired will exert a force and that force is going to be equal and opposite on both of those trolleys. We know the masses of the trolleys are 0.5 kilograms. We know that when the trigger was pressed, the trolleys moved apart in opposite directions, one with a speed of 0.3 and one with a speed of 0.25. Now the first question says, which of the two speeds was the speed of trolley A? Well, if momentum is conserved, and so momentum in the A direction has to equal momentum in the B direction, but the mass of one of these is bigger, the bigger mass, or mass A, is going to have to have a smaller velocity, because that M is bigger, so that V must be smaller, in order to equal the momentum of trolley B. The next question asks for you to show that the mass of X must have been 0 0.10 kilograms. Well, again, we get our conservation of momentum written down here, and we know that MA is 0.5 times X, and MB is just 0.5, sorry, 0.5 plus X there. We can substitute those in to our conservation of momentum equation, expand out the brackets to give us this, and then take our 0.125 over to this side to allow us to find x. And that proves that x has to be 0 0.1 kilograms. So by looking at the initial momentum being 0, conservation of momentum meaning momentum that way has to equal momentum that way, and substituting in our values, we can get our mass for x.